Hello, I'm Tom Benton. We are here with Darcy Benoit, who has joined us tonight for some much needed counseling. Uh, Darcy, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. What is, what is all this on this table here? How did this get here? Um, I brought a few little pieces from my shop, uh, Bees on Broadway in Swanton. Mm -hmm. uh, we're at 40, 43 First Street. And in our shop, we do um, honey extraction from our hives, as well as sell honey from the local area. And I create lots of body products, um, lotions and salves and um, herbal soaps, lip balms, and whatever else feels like something I want to create at the moment. And how do you create these things? Um, some of the recipes I've found online and kind of tweaked them to my own desires or what I had in stock for oils and fragrances. Um, I've been doing it for a few years to sell and I had been concocting things for, for many years prior to that. Hmm. What about the honey? I'm always curious, people that make honey, how do you get into that? Um, about six years ago, my mother expressed interest in keeping bees, so we ended up with bees <laughs> because she wanted them but didn't have time to do it. So it worked out real well. We've enjoyed it ever since. Um, we have six hives in our backyard, and we go to local meetings to learn more about them and statewide meetings to learn more about them, read lots of books. It's been very fascinating. I still feel like I really don't know what I'm doing, but it's, it's interesting. How wrong can things go when you're making honey? Um, the honey is the easy part. They do all the work on that. We just take it from them later in the season. Um, but we, we get stung pretty regularly. Really? Yep. Even with all the gear on, I have a white suit that I wear. And wow. Yeah. Um, you mean we, like a hazmat looking suit, not like a ZZ yeah, top? Yeah, we look like of. aliens walking around the backyard. Oh, wow. We had a, a gathering at our yard one day. And, one of the local neighbors <laughs> said that it looked like there was aliens invading because <laughs> we were all wandering around out there like that. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, when we, um, a couple years back, we decided to help out with the library when they removed the pillar that was full of bees at the Swanton Library. And uh, I got stung like nine times that day just through that couple hour session. Even through the suit? Yeah, well, they got in on the, like my ankles and oh. up underneath the bonnet. Oh. So it happens. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little nerve-wracking when they get angry, when they're all you know, clouds of them around you. Mm -hmm. When I first started doing it, it would make me nervous, and I just kind of step back and take a deep breath and let them calm down, and usually it's okay. I think they're like dogs, though. They can kind of sense your fear. <laughs> the bees? I think so. That's how they communicate is by smell, so. Oh. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Huh. That's terrifying. <laughs> It's not as scary as you would think. It's more interesting than scary, for me at least, after all these years of doing it. Mm -hmm. But we've learned from some really intelligent beekeepers that, that really know what they're doing, mm -hmm. instead of us who just kind of masquerade like we know what we're doing. What is the beekeeper population like, I mean, in this area, but also in Vermont? Are there, are there a lot of people that are keeping there bees? It are, seems like it. Yeah, it's really a growing hobby. There's a lot of people like us that just have you know, one or two or ten hives in their backyard. There's a handful of them that have in the hundreds. We have a local guy right here in St. Albans who has about 600 hives, I think, at any given time, plus his uh, nucleus colonies that he sells for other beekeepers. So is that, if you have 600, is that a full-time? That's his life. That, yeah, that must yeah. take an amazing amount of work. Yeah, he has a few helpers throughout the summer season and a couple that come in, I think, through the winter a little bit. Hmm. But he really knows what he's doing. He's probably one of the best, in my mind. So for those who might be wondering, how does your honey production, your you know, mysterious goods here, how do these tie into the Arts Council? Um, I started going to the Arts Council meetings a bunch of years ago, and I was doing craft shows that the Arts Council put on, a couple of them, and got to know Heather. Um, Butchkowski, mm -hmm. and that's kind of how I got put into the Arts Council, and I really enjoyed the craft show ends of things, mm -hmm. um, getting the crafters out there, people like me that are doing little bits of things at home and getting them out to the public. Do you dabble in other art forms? 
I do, but nothing that I'll ever show anybody. <laughs> I, mm. I've always liked pen and ink and private um, dabbling. Yeah, gotcha. Little bits here and there. Mm-hmm. Yep. So you aren't in the store full time. No, I um, my shop's open Tuesday nights from six to nine, Friday nights from six to nine, and Saturdays from ten to three, or by appointment in the evenings when when I'm not open other days. What are you doing with the rest of your time? I work in Burlington as a paralegal for a couple of attorneys. So my day is spent shuffling papers, answering phones. Very different lines of work. It is. Did yep. This was my happy place. I started doing this as a, as a means to escape reality a little bit. Wow. So it, I had this little room in the back of my house, and I would go in there at night and just create something. I started making lip balm and lotions and just playing around, and I've, since I think I've mastered a few of them now, so I was happy to bring them out to share with others. Mm. I'm having a moment here. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's the bear. Tell me what, so is that, that's a beeswax candle, That is a yes? beeswax candle, yep. How are beeswax candles made? This might be an obvious question to everyone well, else, but. Well, the best beeswax comes from the cappings on the honey. That is what. So on, on a frame of honey that you would take out of your beehive, we, we take a hot knife or a scraper or um, we, I have a little scratcher tool and it takes all the surface off. And I'll set that wax aside and then I'll rinse it out and let it dry and then I, I heat it and it melts right down just like regular wax candles would do. Oh. Um, th the wax that I have, I always filter. I put it through a really, really fine mesh filter to get all the little particulates out of there so it's going to burn clean. There's no no dust or anything in it. Hmm. Um, and then I have little silicone molds that I make the candles out of. So like a little silicone bear mold. Yep, I wow. have bears. I have some that look like the, the honeycomb, the typical honeycomb texture that you would see. Um, I have like some little pillars, hmm. little um, hearts and flowers. So are you a strong advocate of buying, say, local honey versus? Absolutely. Yeah, I local honey is the way to go. You're supporting the local beekeepers. You're encouraging the bees in your area to keep working. Mm -hmm. So definitely support local whenever you can. Have you ever had a bear wander into your backyard searching Thankfully, for the honey? Thankfully, no, because no. we live in Swanton Village. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of bear population in the village. Mm -hmm. um, my chickens tend to wander over there and check it out, but the the bees are. They're pretty, pretty good to get along with. They come away unscathed, huh? Usually, the chickens don't get stung? No, no. Honestly, they're fearless. That's yeah, why. The bees aren't that bad. We have a big garden, and they're next to our garden, and the daughter, my daughter's swing set is right nearby. Mm -hmm. We've had the neighborhood kids all over, and the bees don't usually bother with anybody. Hmm. They're too busy doing their thing. They don't care. As long as you're not going aggressive at them mm -hmm. and tearing their hives apart, they're not going to care. Did you ever imagine that you would have a store like this? I have had a dream for many, many years of having a store of my own. I worked retail long ago, my past life it seems like, um, and I always wanted like a general store. I wanted that to be my, my future. And it was a big dream and it wasn't financially obtainable. And this was kind of like a little, little small step towards making that dream happen. Hmm. Do your kids help out with the production at all? Is that? Uh, my daughter does help, yeah. She's uh, going to be 11. Her name's Amelia, and she does come to our, our hives sometimes. She comes to our meetings that we go to regularly in, Franklin, in uh, Fairfield. Mm -hmm. um, she works at my store. She makes little soaps of her own, and she makes slime. And mm. Oh, she, she's into the slime. Oh, yes. Talk about the slime. Oh, this gosh. Is, this is a big thing <laughs> with, is, like... It is. It's yeah. the best place for her to do it because I have stainless steel counters and she can make a mess and then we just wipe it all up. Wow. I don't know how she makes it, honestly. It's something she, she figured out how to do it and I just let her do her thing. And she has all different colors and I, made, I got her some little jars and she sells them all on her own. And she has she, a blast. She dabbles in other art forms too, specifically. She acting. loves to draw and paint and she's had a couple pictures in the local art shows, the kids' art show that they do at the uh, complex in Swanton. Yeah. Um, she likes. She did like Lego sculpture and put that in it one year. Yep, she really enjoys that. She's also an actor. She is. She was in the Swanee films. Yes. Yep. 
I always hear how you stepped on her hand. <laughs> yes, yeah, because I had to. Yeah, it wasn't child cruelty. <laughs> that was something I was directed to do. Yeah, but she loves it. She loves the camera. She wants to be a singer. And oh, really? Oh, yes. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, she's she's my little star. <laughs> wow. She wants to be. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, if somebody wants to get involved with beekeeping, mm-hmm. what um, advice would you give them? The best thing I can suggest is read every book on beekeeping that you can get. There's a couple of beekeeping for dummies or backyard beekeeping. Those are wonderful. There's um, a biology of beekeeping. It's a big, thick textbook. It's a little pricier than the rest, but it breaks things down to the most specific explanations that you can find. They're super helpful. Um, we have monthly meetings at the Fairfield Library uh, the third Thursday of every month, except November and December at 6.30. And we have guest speakers that come in and talk about beekeeping and rules around it. Um, we've had the state beekeepers inspector come in and talk. We've had insurance agents come in. So you really can learn everything that you didn't know you needed to know. Mm-hmm. It's, it's been great. And it's, it's like its own little family, kind of like the Arts Council. It's, that's a whole other world. And the rest of the people kind of look at us odd because we keep bees, but... It's a good sales pitch. Yeah, but, but it's fun. It's interesting, right. and you never stop learning, and you get to play kind of a scientist. Mm-hmm. Yep. And is it an accessible world? Is it hard to get going on I think beekeeping? It's, it's a little intimidating to step into. I don't think it's necessarily hard, but it's, a, it's intimidating, a little, little bit scary. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you're working with stinging insects. That can so, sense your fear. Yeah. 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 You know, it's a little pricey hobby to get into, so it takes time to, to build up what you need. And, but I think it's, it's easy enough to learn if you're willing to read up on it and go to a few meetings and find a good beekeeper as a mentor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's very helpful. Do you use, is honey a regular fixture in your meals at home? Oh, God, yes. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, we use it in recipes and salad dressings, and I drink a lot of tea. That's my favorite, and I... Have a big spoonful, and I make a bunch of different flavored honeys. So, Ooh. I like to. What shake kind it of up. flavors do you have? I have a uh, orange essence, uh, lemon ginger, elderberry, and habanero. Habanero honey. Habanero honey, it is fabulous. It has a. It's really sweet at first, and then it kind of bites you in the back of your mouth. You get that tingle from the spice. Whoa! Yeah, it's wonderful. It's great. Um, Drizzle it on chicken or dip chicken nuggets or chicken fingers or something in it. Wow! Yeah really good. So if somebody wants to get involved in the Beekeepers Association, is there an email, a phone number? Uh, we have a Facebook page. Facebook page. We try to direct everybody to that. That's just for our Franklin County Club. We're just a local club. There's also the Vermont Beekeepers Association. Um, actually, next week, Tuesday, the, I think it's the 29th of January, we have a statewide meeting at the farm show. Hmm. And we'll have a booth set up there, and we have our um, annual honey contest. Mm-hmm. So we all bring in a jar of honey and put that in the contest and hope for a blue ribbon. So I hear a lot of talk about um, how changing climates might affect the bees and the bee population dwindling for this reason or that. Is that a concern for you? Um, I actually had a really great year last year when a lot of beekeepers were complaining because of there was a drought. Mm-hmm. I find that being in the village for me is helpful because everybody has vegetable gardens and flower gardens and they're watering them every day. Um, outside the village, I think it was a little tougher because mm. you know they're not watering the fields, flowers aren't blossoming as much. I think between the pesticides, the um, the edges of the fields that used to be flowers and trees and plants, and now they're kind of killing that off. I think that affects things. There's more beekeepers in the state, so there's less um, flowers and forage for the bees. They're kind of fighting for it. I just think it's a combination of things. Pesticide use is, is huge though. You know, you're killing off all the good stuff in your area. The herbicides killing off the, the wild flowers and the weeds, the, the ones that everybody calls weeds, the dandelions, um, and all these other little wild things that creep and crawl everywhere. Mm-hmm. I don't, I, that's my biggest concern. I try to encourage people not to do that. There. <laughs> Heard it here first. We have 10 seconds left. It's the doomsday clock is flashing. Oh, boy. <laughs> I can hear something ticking. I think something's going to explode. So we'll say farewell here. Darcy, thank you very thank you much. Thank you so much. We'll see you for uh, future counseling. Farewell. <laughs>